Too. Well, he would, you know, he would tor like torch farmlands, torch foodstuffs, torch farm, you know, like farmhouses, yeah, torch yeah. entire towns, torch entire cities. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a conversation with Colin. I'm Greg, and this is my roommate, Colin. Now, sometimes Colin says crazy stuff. So every Tuesday and Thursday, I reach into my random topic pile, pull one out, throw it at him, and we talk it out for your amusement. If you like that, like the episode, share it with your friends, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Colin, are you ready? Yes. Today's topic of conversation is, who is the biggest dickhead in American history? This was submitted by S. Dog. The biggest dickhead? The biggest dickhead in American history. Now, this is big. He doesn't say, like, colonial American history. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say anything about, like, the founding fathers. In the history of America, who is the biggest dickhead? You gotta think. And I want local. I don't want you going, like, Hitler. That don't count. No, 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 no. That's too easy. You know, what comes to mind for me is General Sherman. General Sherman. Now we I'm might know. To see now we might know. Going. We might know. You know, Sher you know about Sherman. Sherman's March. I was going to say Sherman March. Sherman's March. That's yeah. what I know. I don't know what that means anymore. But uh, I remember learning it at some point. So you know, Greg, in the 1861, the yeah. Civil War erupted, Oof. right yeah. out of nowhere. Slavery. Uh, Just, slavery. Yep. Everybody's mad about it. Upon the election of Abraham Lincoln, the mm -hmm. second Republican to ever run for presidential office. Uh, South Carolina seceded, then a bunch of other states seceded before you knew it, you had another country in the South called the Confederacy. And these two countries existed side by side for a while. Yeah. And, uh, you know, for a few months until the South, uh, you know, uh, you know, attacked a, uh, a Union fort. What is it called? I don't know. Sumter. Thank you. And uh, they... <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying. Are we right? doing this? Are we going to do like American History 101 here and quiz me on it? I'll try. And, and, uh, Keep tossing the softballs yeah. at me. I'll see how many I can hit. And, uh, and so uh, the, the war went on from there. And mm -hmm. um, actually the South had the upper hand for a little while. The South was never going to win the Civil War, right? Because um, the South had no economy. The South's economy, was, enti the South's economy was entirely based on slavery and cotton and tobacco. Yeah. They had much fewer people, many times fewer people than the North had. They had no industrial base, and no countries recognized them as a, as a legitimate Okay, country. that's a bigger problem. So what the South was relying on was something they would call King Cotton. And King Cotton was the idea that cotton was so important, especially to European trade, that the, the European countries would recognize them uh, as an independent country to keep trade going, but that sure. never happened. They would send emissaries mm. over to... Europe and no one ever recognized them, England, France, etc. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so in order to destroy what remaining infrastructure, farming infrastructure was uh, down in the South, uh, Abraham Lincoln dispatched General Sherman to go down to the South and burn everything to the ground. And um, my dad and I were actually just talking about Sherman's march. As uh, you do with over, your father. At, over Christmas break because we were saying that he had the right idea. You know, <laughs> obviously the Union was righteous, right? And the Union was right. Um, and it was great that we won the war, and Sherman was on our side, and that's awesome. But, mm -hmm. but Sherman's technique was so ruthless that we lost an entire, the entire historical landscape of the South, for the most part, with the exception of a few cities like Savannah, Georgia, yeah. is a specific city that he let go. Um, Why did he let it go? He was so impressed by the beauty of Savannah that he uh, telegra uh, telegraphed... Uh, um, Lincoln. Lincoln at the time when he got there and was like, I present to you this as a present, you know, oh. to give the city of Savannah, Georgia or whatever. So he left it alone. But Which his, of course would become a big turning point in The Walking Dead, the game. Yep, of course. Uh, and my, my buddy, my good buddy Mike Pope went, went to school down there. And it, Mike it, Pope? It's a, it's a great, you know, he loves that city. It's very old. Yeah. Um, but, I, but, but Sherman comes to mind for me because he was just so ruthless. It's so unorthodox the way he went about his business. And it wasn't really his idea, but... Yeah, so isn't, isn't Abraham Lincoln the biggest dickhead then in American history? No, because Abraham, we, we, get, we got to counterbalance Abraham Lincoln's, you know, the, the, the great things that he did, which was almost sure. everything. Abraham sure. Lincoln's one of the great presidents of all time, wartime president, mm -hmm. got reelected in 1864. The war wasn't necessarily popular. In fact, in 1863, there was a, a, a draft riot in New York City. So the, the, whole, the whole thing was falling apart. This is also when the income tax first comes in. Uh, so this, the, 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 the war was costing people a lot of money. It was costing people a lot of lives. An extraordinary amount of people died in the, in the Civil War. And that's what people don't really understand is that that's the bloodiest war in, in American history. But if you extrapolate the numbers based on the population then and the population now, we would lose like 8 to 10 million people in the Civil War today oh, wow. in, in, in the same way. You know, so yeah. um, so there, there, there's like this, this whole unpopular thing. So Lincoln is really, you know, it's not only that he's a martyr for the cause because he was, mm -hmm. but 
he's not a dickhead because of all the great things he did. The South okay. needed to be so Sherman out was just the, Sherman's the dickhead because he didn't do any other good stuff. He just went down there and what he just torched it. Did he torture well, people? What did he do? Well, he would you know he would tor- like torch farmlands, torch foodstuffs, torch farm you know like farmhouses, yeah, torch yeah. entire towns, torch entire cities. Split, you know, the entire idea in the beginning of the Civil War is to split the South into two, which happened almost immediately along the Mississippi River. Once that happened, there was, you know, there were certain places like New Orleans that were almost immediately taken by the, by the North. Um, so there were little places that, you know, that the North you know, controlled, but Sherman's whole idea was to just terrorize them. And it really, when you look back on, on what his techniques and stuff like that, it was really a little much. I mean, I understand that we were fighting these guys and stuff mm-hmm. like that, but it really was brother on brother at that point. And... You know, the, the the point is is that Sherman's techniques at the time seemed fine because we needed to win the war and we needed to put them down as quickly as possible. But and and they needed to be put down. I want to I want to you know I want I want to be clear about that. The yeah. Confederacy was an illegal secession. You know, mm-hmm. but what Sherman did to the South's economy set them back generations and caused I think some of the problems that persisted in Reconstruction and afterwards. Because the South wasn't on economic parity with the North because of Sherman's complete destruction of everything yeah. until well after World War II. And maybe that wouldn't have happened. And maybe Reconstruction would have looked different. And the South would have looked at us a little bit differently um, with a little bit more of a brotherly slant. And that we might not have gone through the Jim Crow era in quite a violent, as, as violent of a way if Sherman didn't torch so much of the South in order to instill fear in them. So there's a lot of revisionist history specifically about what he did and his march to the sea and while i think he's a good man and was following orders but like that whole technique i think makes it one of the more uh, unsavory parts of american history do you uh, is this still a reason then you think that for like you know people walking around with their confederate flags saying the south will rise again is there still is that still the chip on their shoulder that, it could, i mean they got so i've never heard it talked about this way that right that they were set back generations because mm-hmm. obviously their economy was destroyed so like yeah, you would have a chip on your shoulder, yeah. you know, for these northerners. Yeah, I mean, there's a whole Yankees there's a whole them. there's a whole argument, you know, the whole Copperhead movement and stuff like that. Like there's all these arguments about like different ways that we could have dealt with the South in the Civil War. Mm-hmm. We could have strangled their economy. We didn't want to be patient. Maybe we shouldn't have been patient because you know slaves were still being used. The South did instigate the fight at Fort Sumter, and. You know, we didn't actually, you know, and they, and they invaded the North. I mean, a lot of people forget about that, too. Like, Gettysburg, the most, pot, you know, f- most famous war in American history uh, in Amer- on American soil, was fought mm. in Pennsylvania. It wasn't fought in, you know, Tennessee or something like that. So there's all of these aspects we have to keep in mind that they were actually aggressors and they actually were winning for a while. But with the lack of European recogni- rec- uh, you know, lack of European countries recognizing them as a legitimate country and refusing to trade with them, mm-hmm. King Cotton... Uh, costs plummeting because there was so much cotton glut on the market and uh, the lack of an industrial base in the economy means that we probably could have just blockaded them for a few years um, and suffocated them. The, 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 the problem with that is that they wanted to talk peace in which that the Confederacy would still exist and so it seemed like the fight was inevitable and if that is true then Lincoln's course of action in 1861 and 1862 will right up to Appomattox in 1865 was mm-hmm. right. But Sherman's what came to my came to mind for me immediately because you got to be intellectually honest, right? Like we're on the northern side, right? Like we're right. northerners. The winners. We're, we won. We won the war, and <laughs> on our own backs. And you know there are there is a legitimate thing to be said that the, the the South was fighting not only to protect slavery but protect states' rights and Tenth Amendment rights, and that they really believed, um, that even though slavery was at the core of their cause, that um, they were fighting for independence, their own war of independence. Yeah. That could be said. I don't agree with it. They needed to be squashed out and put down. They were wrong. But we didn't have to take it to that level, I don't think. And, and there were real repercussions for that. You know? And yeah. I'm not sure it really had to go down like that. And as, an, and as an historian, as a guy who loves history, we lost so much great history by, by his scorching of everything. You know, yeah. his march to the sea. So there's like all these repercussions. So good man fought for the right side but you know let's think about the long term 100 year plus repercussions of that following 1865 and you might come to the conclusion that Sherman is maybe the biggest dickhead in American history all right well I think that about wraps up the conversation Colin thank you for your time ladies and gentlemen thank you for yours and of course thank you S dog for submitting this topic of conversation what do you want to see Colin talk about let us know in the comments then make sure you like the video share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel until next time have a conversational day